we are going to look at the best laser engraver to buy without all of the fluff and bullcrap. So if you don't know which one to get, hang out with me for a little bit and I will try to save you the most time and money as I can. When I say the best laser engraver, the best laser engraver is the one that works for you. To be thorough without too much detail, I am unbiasedly breaking this video down to what types of lasers there are, general things to expect, pricing and savings, and a few other things you need to consider before buying one. Stay to the end because it is the most important part that will wrap up all of this information. Full transparency here guys, I hold an affiliation with Extol and will be using their lasers in this video. This doesn't persuade any opinion of mine, there are fantastic laser brands out there for you guys to choose from. So let's jump into the different types of lasers and who they are for. Number 1. Diode Lasers Diode lasers are the most affordable type of laser engravers with a general price range from around $200 to over $1,000 depending on the brand and wattage you get. These lasers work by using a light emitting diode and are great for general engraving and cutting on various materials. As with any laser, the more watts you have, the more power you have. If you plan on doing a lot of material cutting, you will want a higher wattage diode unit. You are going to find that 10, 20, and 40 watts are the most common with some varying exceptions depending on the brand. Now, here are a few things to consider before buying a diode laser. Number one, diode units create a lot of smoke because most of them are not enclosed. You will want to use them in a garage or in an open place you don't care to have smoke in. Number two, you usually have to assemble some parts on open diode units. This isn't too hard, but it can be intimidating for some people who get stressed out by screws. With that being said, reputable laser brands will come with detailed instructions. We got my diode lasers put together in about 25 minutes. This may not be a big deal for you, but it is for some people. Number three, accessories. Air assist and honeycomb grids are must-have accessories in my opinion if you go with a diode unit. This will cost you a little more money, but they are worth it because they make cutting and engraving so much cleaner. Now for the most important question, who are diode laser units for? Because of the price and versatility, I recommend diode lasers to people who are just starting with a laser engraving. This will get you used to how a laser engraver works and will teach you a lot about all that goes into engraving without breaking your bank accounts. Now don't be fooled though, many people still use these units to run a small business. If you were to ask my personal opinion, a 10 watt diode laser is great for someone just starting with laser engraving who needs to save the most money. I wouldn't go with any less wattage than this though. The 20 watt is a good middle of the road you can say, and anything more than this will be efficient at cutting and engraving at a higher price point. As I said, every company will vary on their wattage. Now stay with me through this next part and I will show you how to save the most money as possible. Number 2. CO2 Lasers CO2 lasers are arguably the most popular and expensive lasers you can buy. You can expect a general price range from around $400 to over $15,000 for industrial units. You've probably heard of Glowforge. This is a perfect example of a desktop CO2 laser marketed to the general public. Unlike the diode laser units, CO2 lasers work by using a gaseous mixture in a CO2 tube which makes the laser beam. CO2 lasers generally start at 40 watts and can go well over 600 watts from what I have seen. When compared to diode lasers, CO2 lasers are more powerful and faster at processing materials which translates into speed and efficiency on many projects. These units are also much larger, which allows you to process bigger materials and smaller materials in bulk depending on the bed size you get. Since most CO2 lasers are enclosed, all that smoke is trapped inside the enclosure and is pulled out by an exhaust fan. The more expensive you go with a CO2 laser, you can have some pretty nice features, like a live preview camera, which means you can drop a design on the material, and what you see on your computer screen is what is going to engrave. There are more features and things to note here, but that is for another video. Now, things you need to consider before buying a CO2 laser. Number one, the size and weight. CO2 lasers are big and heavy, even the smaller desktop ones that don't come with a stand and wheels. If you don't have the space for a CO2 laser with proper ventilation for the exhaust hose, you may need to pivot or do some modifications to accommodate it. And P.S. I use this Husky desk from Home Depot for my desktop lasers and actually all my lasers. Number two, price. CO2 lasers will carry a heftier price tag depending on the bells and whistles you get. So, who are CO2 lasers for? In my opinion, CO2 lasers are for enthusiasts, creators, and business owners who need a versatile laser that can handle small to large projects with consistency, 
dependability, and speed. If you plan on going into the business of laser engraving, a CO2 laser is the way to go if your budget allows. Do some research and make a list of the features that are important for you and go from there. And for the final one, number three, fiber and infrared lasers. People will often confuse these two different style of lasers thinking they are the same, but they are not. I am not going to break this down too much, but the wavelength on these machines allows for the engraving and marking of various types of metal. These two lasers usually operate on a Galvo system, meaning the beam is being directed by moving mirrors which make them extremely fast to head engraving. This does have an exception with the infrared laser being available on a gantry style diode unit as well, which you can see behind me. The fiber laser is made for removing a lot of metal. You are getting a good deep etch in the surface and you can fill it with your fingers. The power of fiber lasers generally range from 20 to 100 watts and you can expect a price of around $2,000 to $5,000 for a 20 watt fiber laser. Infrared lasers on the other hand are more of a marker, meaning they can darken the surface of the metal as opposed to etching deep like a fiber laser. These are generally around 1 through 2 watts but you can find ones more powerful. They provide great results on metal, plastic, leather, and darker acrylic materials. You can expect a price range of $1,000 through $2,000 from my research at the time of this video. So who are fiber and infrared lasers for? I believe infrared lasers are for people who want to expand their creative horizons into many areas that are not possible with diode and CO2 lasers. The ability to mark metal, well, that's pretty dang awesome. Some of the Galvo style systems like this F-Tool F1 are portable so you can take them to different places like craft shows. And I do like my X-Tool F1 because I have a blue light diode and an infrared put together in there. It's a hybrid unit and I can take it anywhere. Fiber lasers on the other hand are used in more of industrial style settings and are a little more complex to operate. I've seen enthusiasts get fiber lasers for engraving coins, firearms, be careful with that one by the way and other things that require a deep engraving. Now things to consider before buying. These style units are made for engraving only a few materials, mainly metal. They are not designed to engrave and cut wood. For this reason, you will find a lot of people pairing these infrared machines with CO2 lasers because of the creative opportunities. There is more to cover here, but I think we have a good reference point to go from now. Which laser do you think fits your needs the best? Tell me which one and why in the comments below. Now, are you guys ready? How to save money. Number one, look for holiday sales. Almost every reputable laser company will have some type of sales events during the holidays. If you can hold out, that would be the time to buy. If you are spending any amount of money, every little bit you can save adds up, and some of these sales events can save you a lot of money. And number two, discount codes. Sometimes you can find special influencer coupon codes that will give you extra money off. And by the way, I hate the term influencer. I just want to be known as someone who loves what they do and shares it with the world. But with that being said, I do have an influencer coupon code right here. Number three, refurbished units. If you are on a shoestring budget, buying refurbished units from the dealer can save you a ton of cash. Some people will only buy new, but there is nothing wrong with buying refurbished if you can't afford it, especially if it comes with some type of warranty. What other ways have you guys found to save money? Let me know if I missed something in the comments below. Okay guys, we are in the final part of this video. Thank you for hanging with me. This is how to narrow down on which laser engraver you should get. This information will wrap up everything we just covered, so don't skip. Number one, warranty and support. When buying a new laser engraver, look at how long the company has been in business, the available support, and if they offer an extended warranty. There are many brands of lasers out there that simply do not cut it for me. I will spend a little bit more if it means I am getting support and a proven warranty. The longer a company has been in business, I find that the more bugs they will have worked out of their products, <laughs> usually. I'm not going to tell you which brand I think is best. That is up to you to decide. Number two, software. Something you need to consider is which software you are going to use on the computer for your laser. While some companies make their own software like Extol, a lot of people use what I consider the industry standard, Lightburn. While this gives you the most creative options, it can be a bit complex to use. I chose to go with Extol's Creative Space software because it's simple. This isn't a plug for Extol, guys. This is my experience. It gives me all the options I need and you don't have to have a freaking PhD to operate it. I'm not knocking on Lightburn. It is an awesome software with many features that I need to sit down and spend time with. I'm just a simple guy and I want something simple I can operate. Number three, consider an ecosystem. 
Will you be making money with your laser? If so, I recommend considering one platform that has an ecosystem of products. Many creators invest into more than one laser for their business. Rather than having different laser brands, I find it comforting to have the same brand of lasers because they complement each other well. There are times when I use my Extel P2 CO2 laser to cut out some projects and I will hop right over to this F1 for another project. I know exactly what I am going to get when I engrave without fooling ground. This isn't a rule guys, it's just my personal opinion. If you want to piece different brands together, go ahead. I prefer the same brand across the board when doing multiple projects. With all those questions in mind, let's summarize this whole thing. Which style of laser would suit you the best? A diode, a CO2, a fiber, or an infrared laser? Once you have picked a style of laser, what is your budget price range? Is it $500, $1,000, or even $2,000 or more? Once you have this number, find three through five laser engravers and begin comparing them against each other. Start with the reputation and warranty of the company, consider the software, and if you will want a different style of laser down the road. From there, look at sales events to see if you can afford the best laser you feel best about. In conclusion, with everything that has been said in this video, pay attention to what laser machine gives you the most peace and take it from there. The best laser engraver is the one that will meet your demands. Technical specs are nice and you can get lost in comparing which one is more powerful and so on. But you know what, you may not need to spend $3,000, you may need to spend only $500. Look and see what works best for you. For me, I chose to go with Extel lasers because of the software, premium products, and the ecosystem they provide. Your needs may be different than mine though. But if you have taken a look at Extol and decided they are the brand to go with, you can use my, hate the word, <laughs> influencer. I'm just going to call it my code, not even influencer code, my code CC10 for 80 off $1,000 at the checkout. If you missed a sale, check back and I will do my very best to have the links to the best price below with any special promo codes to help save you guys the most money. That's it guys, I tried to make this video as simple as possible and I hope you were able to make an educated decision because of it. Bookmark this video so you can reference back to it and feel free to watch another video coming up on the screen right now. You can find the lasers I use in the links below. Have a good one guys.